Hey everyone, welcome to week six of our remote teaching experience. It's been really great to see how committed you guys are and you're checking in every week. So I'm really proud of you. You only have a couple more weeks, so stay with it. This video today is about your outline assignment for the Macbeth essay. Some students do get confused about the components of an outline. So I wanted to be very clear with the assignment and what's required of you by the end of the week. I'm going to share my screen now so you guys can see the assignment itself and then a sample of an outline that I made. So this is the assignment as I'm giving it to you. This is today, May 4, which is crazy. But now that we've finished the play of Macbeth, should I tell size that? and you've chosen your essay prompt like you did at the end of the week, we are going to compose an essay in small steps. This is different from how we've composed essays in the past, where I've asked you guys to write them all in one session in a classroom, just like the state test requires. Well, we don't have a state test this year, and if you even had taken it um, this year, it would be over. So we're gonna do it differently as you're gonna write essays from here on out with me. The directions are that I want you guys to review the resources, including this video, that are supplied to you via Google Classroom and the wrap folder to become more familiar with what an outline is, and then complete your own based on the prompt that you selected. So these are the parts of your outline that are mandatory for this assignment. You should include or reference an introduction, topic, three topic paragraphs, and a conclusion. This does not mean you have to write your entire introduction, topic, paragraphs, or conclusion. It actually just means you write the word introduction. I know that sounds confusing, but I want to be as clear as possible, and some students can get confused with those things. So as you'll see in the sample below, I just reference that there's an introduction, topic, paragraphs, and conclusion, but I don't actually write them or go super into depth about my sentence structure within them. The next required part of this outline is a thesis statement. This is a single sentence that answers the prompt you chose. So you can go back to last week's assignment of the prompt, the essay prompts, look at the one that you chose. If you don't remember which one you chose, just go to the Google Classroom history and try to answer that question as directly and succinctly as possible. This is a thesis statement and you will include this underneath the category of the introduction, as I'll show later. This, of course, can change throughout the process. It probably should change if you're doing some research within the book or thinking more about the book. It's possible that you'll sculpt or change or throw away your thesis and put a new one. But for right now, do your best to try to answer that prompt as succinctly and clearly as you can. The next step are the three topics themselves. So aside from just referencing that this is a topic paragraph one, this is topic paragraph two, you're actually going to, try to, going to try to decide what those topics are. These are three smaller criteria of organization that will support the main idea in three separate ways. Think of them as three points of argument or three categories of, in which you will be arguing that idea. The last piece of the required outline assignment is your evidence. So you need three total pieces of evidence and two of them should be word for word quotations. That means the third one, which is not a word for word, can be a summary or a reference to a point of the story that you recall. But you do not actually need to give me word for word quotations, okay? So just reviewing the parts of this assignment that you need, you need all of the parts of the essay, which is the introduction, the topic paragraphs, and the conclusion. You need a working thesis, which may change in the future, but do your best to answer that question as clearly as you can. Topics, so three subcategories under which you are arguing your main idea. And then the evidence portion, which is three total pieces of evidence and two of which should be word for word quotes from the text. You can see that Macbeth category in Google Classroom to find links to the play itself to, to find those quotations. Again, this will be due at the end of the week, so you have the whole week to find those quotes. I'm going to scroll down to my sample 
outline on a Macbeth essay on power. This is the last prompt, I think number five of the prompts that I gave you. And I chose that one just because I was thinking about the ideas of power. So here you'll see all of my parts of the essay. I have the introduction, topic one, topic two, and topic three with a conclusion at the end. I don't actually write a conclusion or those paragraphs or the introduction. I just indicate that they're there. Then in step from the introduction, you'll see the thesis. This is my thesis statement that responds to the question about power, about what Macbeth the play is saying about the concept of power. Here, I'm basically saying that too much celebration of one person's achievement can hurt everyone, including that initially celebrated person. Kind of a simple concept, but I do think that it's something we forget a lot, and it's something very co clearly shown in Macbeth, and it clearly answers the prompt that was given. So too much celebration of one person kind of kills the whole, everything for everyone. And then I look at that celebration in three different ways. How does it, how does it ruin um, everyone else um, in the story? Well, I have three different areas and ways that it hurts everyone through the government, through the fr through friendships, and through the family unit. So I'm just thinking of three categories within that thesis that help you organize the way that we look at this answer to the prompt. So the first one is government, which I misspelled. <laughs> okay, and I just say that Lady Macbeth celebrates um, her husband's achievements that it hurts the government. And then I think that's pretty easy to find an example of where the government is being harmed by the celebration of one person too much. Here's a quote right here it's from page 33 in my book. Um, you guys will have the, the link on the online one, so you'll use different different page numbers. The next category is corruption of friendships. And then I just go straight to Banquo, uh, Macbeth's relationship with Banquo, although you could go to a number of them. The last piece of corruption I see is the family unit. So Malcolm loses his father, King Duncan, and Fleance loses his father, Banquo, obviously. So there are three ways in which the celebration of one person kind of kills the party and corrupts everything for everyone. Okay, so, and then I just reference the conclusion right there, and that's it. Notice that this one does, the last point of evidence does not have a quotation. So I'm not planning on referencing that in a particular place. That's convenient because there are actually two examples here, technically. So I can just kind of uh, summarize them and recall them with my own words. I don't need to go word for word from the text. But these ones do have the quote. So I will, of course, include this as well in the assignment on Google Classroom so you guys can refer back to that um, sample outline. And I hope that you guys are finding this super clear. You'll have all week to do it. I'll give you till Friday. And I'm looking forward to seeing what it is you have to say about Macbeth. One last thing, some of you might be curious about the length of this essay. I'm going to ask you to write a 500 to 750 word essay. That's two to three pages, roughly. Okay, I think that's totally something you guys can do, um, and I think you're capable of, more than capable of. All right, I look forward to our uh, YouTube live stream this week, and then our small group meets as well. Take care, everyone, and have a great week.